Hello and welcome back to my channel. If you've not been here before, my name is Jenna. I'm a Canadian who has been living here in Germany since 2014. And I have learned a lot throughout the last seven years being here in Germany. I dove in right away. I met tons of experts and I've learned about a ton of amazing and difficult topics when moving here to Germany. So if you want more information about that, you can go ahead and check out lifeingermany.com. Otherwise, I have an expert on the call with me today and that is Anna from Global mobilitytrainer.com. She offers coaching services specifically with international families in mind and third culture kids. So she's lived and breathed it herself. She has done this for many, many years as a licensed coach. And I am really excited to have Anna on the channel today to be able to go through this topic because this is a topic that a lot of you guys tend to ask me. So I've put together a bunch of questions for Anna that are pressing questions that you guys ask me on a daily basis. And I really hope that this video helps you out. So please give a big warm welcome to Anna. Anna, I am so happy to have you on our channel today. Thanks for having me. I'm Anna of Global Mobility Trainer, and I'm really pleased to share some tips and advice about moving to Germany and transitioning with kids. Thanks a lot, Anna. I guess the best way for us to start would be for me to ask you, where did this all begin? What is your story? Maybe you want to give our viewers a little bit more background on you, who you are, and what actually inspired you to create this business. I've always been an expat or a global nomad. I was four. We moved to Germany for the first time. My dad worked for the military. I grew up in a like in a sense of staying for a bit and then we're going to leave again. So there was always that expat feeling. We ended up staying quite a while, but then I moved as a teen, as an adult, I've been around a lot. And the fact is my dad grew up overseas and my grandparents. So it was kind of a lifestyle that we've always had. We've got three kids now that have lived in a number of countries. And most recently now we've been back in Germany about two years. And that was an interesting one because they always considered themselves German, but they didn't really have a clue. So there was a lot to learn when we got here. And for me, it was coming with the, the knowledge of personal lived experience of being an expat child and transitioning and moving a lot. But then my education and the research I've done has also just always confirmed that I wanted to support kids and families. When we came back to Germany, I realized that um, my kids were going to need it. They're in an age where they would need a lot of time and the support. To just to transition and be here because it was really, really different from where we're living in China. And so I just decided to make official what I'd kind of been doing as a hobby the whole time and support other families transitioning. I think it's really different when you're bringing your kids, you know, from abroad, from somewhere else over here to Germany that I probably as a mother would worry a lot more about, is this the right decision? You know, what are we doing? For me, the biggest question was definitely always, and for a lot of my viewers and my readers who email me is, what can we do to make this transition easier for our kids? How can we make this move a lot easier? for our children and not just for us of course I think we're going to worry as parents no matter what but how can we make it easier for our kids that's a good question and all the parents that I've spoke, ever spoken to think about it right the truth is it's not just about the logistics it's not just about you know finding a house and all that the softer the emotional side is the one that is harder and the one that we don't always know how to think about but the most important thing I think to realize is that we as parents or you know whether it's single parents or or, or a couple are the only thing that's staying stable in their lives, right? So if we move our kids, we're taking them out of an environment that they're familiar with, the people, the smells, the sounds, the tastes, and we're moving them. And the only thing that stays the same is the parents and siblings, okay? And we have to understand that our role in their lives become more important. And so as we're moving and doing all the nitty gritty details, we need to remember that our kids need us more than ever. Any kind of acting out or changes in behavior are signs that we need to pay more attention to them, not scold them more, but actually take the time to sit down because that will pay off in the long term is, is giving them the attention and the security and the stability that we're here and everything else might have changed, but we're going to be okay. If you have time beforehand, always helpful to teach kids about emotions so that they can identify what they're feeling and tell you about it mm -hmm. uh, rather than us having the second guess. So if they have emotional literacy where they can actually express what they're feeling, that can help them tell us what's going on and help us understand. And so that 
that is a huge thing if we can help our kids. The other thing is really is the practical stuff, right? And we need to involve them as soon as possible and according, I mean, age appropriately, right? But kids worry about the detail. They worry about their needs. Like, where am I going to sleep? Where are we going to eat? You know, and they hear us, they listen to us talk about stuff. They, they pick up on our worries. And when they're, they're taking all that on, they don't have time to, you know, explore and be curious and, and take in the new stuff in an excited way, because they might be obsessed about, you know, where are we all going to sleep and how we do this and, you know, the stuff that we as adults are probably discussing openly. Yeah. or at least they're hearing it. So we need to focus on that. It's really take care of their, their physical needs as well so that they are free to be open and explore all the good stuff that's happening. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I think that's always also so tough for parents is that you, you really kind of have to stay on the ball, you know, like at the end of the day, I mean, the move is so important, but being a family and making sure that you stick together and focus on each other's needs first is also so important. I mean, I'm moving from like one spot in Dusseldorf to another house in Dusseldorf, and I still have to remind my husband on a daily basis, you know, we all, our child's only two and a half, but at the same time, like he feels that stress and, and he knows, and then he lashes out because of it. And I think it's so easy to kind of like jump away and not realize what's going on and to have to like jump back is so important and to to see your kids and understand what they're going through because it is hard I mean it's not just hard for us right it's really important that we take that time to just understand that everything in their life and if we're moving country I mean it's the the smells the sounds like everything is changing and then of course you know the people are changing they're losing their friends they're losing family members. So, so, you know, saying goodbye and taking the time to consciously do that, like to really say, okay, you know, we're leaving, finding closure is important as well. One of the hardest things for a lot of the families that, that I speak to, at least is like, you know, that you have to, you know, keep this strong bond and keep those family dynamics positive and flowing and make sure that you're, you're still able to have a good time. But do you have any tips for people or for families who are going through, you know, the stress of relocating or moving to a new country? Like, how do you keep that family dynamic going positively, even throughout all of that crazy stress of that move? We well, doesn't all have to be positive, right? Mm -hmm. In talking about emotions, our kids need to see us express our emotions too, right? So if I'm feeling worried and sad, then it's okay to say that I'm feeling worried and sad, but just say, yeah, I'm having a rough day today too, right? Yeah. And just acknowledge that. So that's really important because we're teaching them about emotions there too. As a family, it can be really useful to know why you're going, right? Um, you know, and every ideally everybody in the family would have a reason, a why, right? And then to keep that in mind when things get hard, like why did we do this in the first place? And, and sort of that adventure mindset and the curiosity, right? Let's be, you know, like, let's figure out how to recycle today, all right? Let's figure out, <laughs> let's challenge ourselves to remember to have the Euro coin so that we can get the cart <laughs> at the grocery store, right? I mean, there's things like that, that instead of being annoyed about it, you know, make it fun, right? Yeah. Make it a challenge. I have a ritual of saying, so how do we do today, right? Did we manage this? So what funny thing happened to you? And just try to keep the joy and, and like the really the sense of adventure too. And that comes back to rituals too. So maintaining a family unit that bond together is really important also through rituals. With little kids, it's often like bath time and reading before bed, but it can be things like Friday night movie night or, you know, watching a soccer game or, you know, there's, there's tons of different things that we do. And whatever we have where we left, we should try to maintain some of that in the new place. Right. That gives us stability. That's what makes us us as a family. Right. Mm -hmm. So ironically, we have always had Saturday morning poetian. Right. So yeah. living in 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 South Africa and China, sometimes we had to bake our own. Right. Yeah. Now here in Germany, it's much easier. But that's a ritual that we've always had. And, and so that kind of thing can help you as a family just bond together and then build new stuff. So it's knowing why. Um, keeping that sort of adventure spirit and curiosity, challenging yourselves and sharing the challenges and sharing your achievements and sharing the really embarrassing stuff too. Um, <laughs> and then and then maintaining rituals as a family and as a yeah. couple. When you're mentioning that, like I haven't actually gone through, you know, the the process of relocating as a family, for example, but 
when you were mentioning that stuff, I was thinking, you know what? My mom did a really, really good job at raising us because she actually did similar things because when my parents were going through a divorce, I mean, it's change, right? I think that the tips that you just gave us, like, it's amazing for, for change in general. So she used to, we would dread the summers because we wanted to be with our friends all the time at school. And then she would say, you know, let's sit down and we're going to make a bucket list of like things that you want to do in the summer so that even when we were going to some boring town, you know, that we didn't want to go to, there was things that we had to look forward to. And I think that when you mentioning those challenges, I think every family usually loves to be set up for a challenge or like to make it a little bit competitive with your siblings. It's like, who can figure out, you know, the fun flashing system here in Germany first or something. And I think that's really cool. That's really important is the sense of play and adventure, I think, at any age, right? You know, whether they're, they're small or, or older. Kudos yeah. to your mom. <laughs> right? That's, I think it takes a little bit of thinking. And then when somebody says something like that, I'm like, yeah, you know, my mom always did that, like without thought. And I'm sure it was tough but for us every transition was so seamless that's a really nice thing to have as a child and i think that that a lot of international families can can take something from that and can can do the same when moving here to germany or making a change in general which is good for the international families that message me the number one question and i know it's also the hardest question to answer would be what do I do about education? What do I do about schools? When I come here, should I put my children in an in international school so that they don't get, they don't feel this culture shock or this transition as heavy, perhaps as if they did in the public school? Or do I put them in the public school because that's the best and the easiest way perhaps to transition into life here in Germany because you're surrounded by people who are close to you, you know, they speak German. So, what would you say? Like, what's the best answer to that? It's a, it's the hardest one question that I get, and I have no idea how to answer it because I don't know them. I don't know the people. Right. Well, that's exactly that's why it's a trick question. Is the answer is individual by family, right? And it can change within the family, and you might have kids in the family that go to different schools because of that. But it starts with your why. So why are you coming? What are you trying to do here? How long are you going to be here? Um, what level of education are your kids at? What special needs do the kids maybe have? I mean, if you've got uh, special ed kids that are like um, that need speech assistance or something, that's a whole nother issue. And like your personal values too. And, and so what's important? All of that feeds in as well as your financial situation. International schools are not free. German schools are free. So, so there's a lot of different factors to consider and you can't answer that, yeah, right. you know, like for one, for, for everybody. Just some things to consider though. If your kids go to a local school, they're going to meet their neighbors, right? Because, you know, there's like a cashment and the kids in this town go to this school, right? So they're much more likely to find local connections to, you know, run into the kids on the street, to be able to walk out and make friends that they've seen at school in their village, town, neighborhood, whatever. That's a huge win mm -hmm. that you don't have. If you're going to an international school, you're taking a bus or you're driving your kids to a different location. They meet lots of cool kids at international school, but when they come home, they don't know any of the neighbors, right? In yeah. most cases. So one thing you have to consider if your kids are going to a local school, especially if they're um, in like primary or grade school, is that they're going to be out of school at noon mm -hmm. or at 1230, which can crimp, you know, your day a lot, but that can be a hard thing. But th that's just one thing to consider if you're choosing schools. Um, so local schools, you've got, you know, the, all the local connections, you're full on in the German experience, um, but the kids are home a lot sooner. Yeah. And the support for international students or non-native or non-German speakers is sketch. There, there's very basically no support. Yeah. But, you know, sometimes you might get a really good teacher that helps, but there isn't anything there. So as parents, we have to be really proactive and help our kids with that. Um, and maybe go to the teachers and find support that way. So those are kind of the things to consider about a local school. Yeah. Um, for international schools, you're going to get an international experience, depending on what system it can be like in a U.S. like high school system or the more the British IB system, right? There's different different systems. Um, and it'll mostly be English with like a touch of German, right? Yeah. But also other languages. So it's really what you want, what age your kids are at. I mean, if your kids are really close to graduation, then you might want to just keep them in whatever system they've been in so they can yeah. finish school. So there's a lot of factors to consider there. Not as easy as you would hope. There's no straight answer. 
No, there really isn't. I think I, whenever I try to answer that for someone, I always, yeah, say like, well, what's, what situation are you in? Of course, as you mentioned, the biggest thing is cost. If, if you can afford it, then that's great. And if not, then uh, maybe your options may be a little bit limited. For people who are leaning more in the public direction, perhaps they want to stay here and they really find it beneficial for their children to learn the language and make local friends and live close to their friends, which for me, I know in school was so important. What tips do you have for those international children who are coming here to be able to jump on board and kind of learn the language quick enough to be able not only to go to school at, and study with ease, but to be able to actually have, you know, these relaxed conversations with their friends and be able to have fun and not have to worry about, am I saying this right? I mean, it takes a while to learn German, I think. <laughs> but <laughs> it's, it's um, obviously getting out there and meeting people. And this applies for adults as well as kids. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, you're going to learn... Ideally, you take some kind of language classes that'll help you sort of get started. Mm -hmm. Then if you're in school, you're going to learn it there. Um, but make it clear to the teachers that, you know, where you are in the learning journey and what you're doing as a parent to support mm -hmm. your kids too. And then there's the, the Verein, the clubs, right? That's where everything happens in Germany. And I mm -hmm. think once you kind of unlock that and realize that that's where stuff is, then you're on the way to meeting people and getting where you want to go. You live in a small town and everybody is in some kind of club right mm -hmm. and the variety and the options are huge and the the fees are minimal right yeah. I mean I think I pay like 25 euros a year for my son to be in the brass band and they rehearse once a week plus he gets a discount at the music school for his lessons I mean it's crazy right nice. <laughs> um, but that's where you, you meet whether it's music whether it's sport you know anything that you can think of pretty much is available yeah. in a fine that's the best way and then the kids identify through that too yeah. right and they, they, they draw you in it takes some bravery and courage on the parts of the kids I kind of teach myself and, and and my kids like what's the worst thing that can happen right mm -hmm. what's the worst thing that can happen you go to the club you, you hate it you yeah. go home. I think this was a hard thing for me to understand too. Um, and I actually just mentioned it in one of my recent YouTube videos as well, is that it's so different, you know, here because in Canada, I would probably say, you know, the, the best way to learn English and to make new friends would be to just go to school and do school sports and school clubs. We don't have like brass band on the side in Canada, you know, it's something that's all integrated within the school. And I think that that's a tough thing for international families when they first get here is because they don't realize that. And as you mentioned, school ends so early here. And I know depending on the school, they do, some of them do have these extended hours for the kids whose parents work later into the day, um, but not everybody's guaranteed that spot. It's not offered everywhere in every city, I think. So it's just always different and you never know. So I think that you have to kind of switch that mentality and, and realize, okay, it's not all school. You know, that's not where you're going to learn the bulk of the language and you're going to meet the bulk of your friends. A lot of it is, yeah, in these clubs. And the coolest thing about Germany is I think they have clubs for everything. Like in Canada, it's the basics, you know, football and baseball and basketball. But here it's like you can do whatever you want here and you can do it as often as you want and mix them up and start and stop. And it's affordable, as you mentioned. So you can't really go wrong, right? But it, it, it takes effort on the first of all, parents have to understand that that's how it works, right? You exactly. don't school. School is your, you know, is academic and the rest of it is you have to figure it out on your own. It's not mm -hmm. just automatically organized at the school that's a huge difference and yeah. the international schools are different this international schools are more like, like you talked about a canadian or a u.s system where there's stuff at school yeah. so as an organizing that can take some effort but once it's there then it kind of takes care of itself but that, that's the key and i think that and being open and just going out and approaching people like one other key thing that we need to be aware of is that it's not automatic, right? Nobody is sitting around waiting for us to show up and be their new friend. It sure. took my son two years to really click with anybody. And I think knowing that and being prepared to invest in time is, is also key. That's also really important to mention in German culture is that in, in Canada, for example, when you go to school, um, we usually jump on you like the new kid is the cool kid. <laughs> and I think in Germany, it's a little bit different. And maybe it is also because they're a bit shy to speak uh, English when they've 
grown up with German. I mean, a lot of young kids do actually speak English nowadays, which is cool, but it is nerve wracking speaking a new language and English is a new language for them too, right? So I think that you, it is so important that you really have to put yourself out there. I mean, but. And the best way to do that is to ask lots of questions like, where do you play, you know, football? Where can I learn swimming lessons? Just asking questions like that all the time yeah. um, gets a conversation going. And again, that applies for kids and adults as well. If you're not sure what, to, if you are, you know, like young kids, kindergarten, you're picking them up and you're standing around. The first few months, I like, I prepared questions to ask just so I have something to say. It's stuff that I actually need to know, but then I you know, like make a note so I can ask somebody at pickup just to, make a connection to yeah. right yeah it's a quick easy conversation and then you know you move on from there this is what I have to do right now because my son is moving into Kita in August I have friends here but they're not you know parent friends or family friends and so I'm so nervous and I was like I have to create like a list of questions to ask people and see you know if they have any groups or anything that I can join because it would be nice to make some new friends if there was I guess any last tips? Like I'm sure people watching this video are probably in very similar situations. They're all probably freaking out as much as I was moving even without a child. So do you have any last tips to give them, you know, to kind of calm them down and ease their worries when they relocate here to Germany with their families? Yeah. And I think it has nothing to do directly with the kids. It has something to do with you as a parent. <laughs> yeah. Um, right. So we, have to take care of ourselves so that we have the resources to take care of everybody else right so you know like if we're running on empty we have no patience we have nothing right and then we're just you know here's the tv here's the pizza be done with it uh, which is okay sometimes but you know you won't be satisfied with that as a parent long term yeah so it's really important that we figure out how we will live our life and what's important for us and what we can do to make ourselves feel comfortable and to replenish sort of recharge as well like if you love to go for a run find a place to go for a run if you love to hang out in a coffee shop right you know find a favorite coffee shop and go there over and over right until they yeah. get to know you and then you start True. feeling like you belong somewhere knowing sort of your happy space crafting whatever it is that, that you know gets you out of whatever's happening and it takes you away for a little bit that's really important and give yourself the time to do that because yeah. you'll be a better parent for it man I wish I had you when I moved here even without children <laughs> Thank you so much. I think it's going to be a huge help for everybody who watches this video. And I think that even I'm thankful, like I learned stuff even years down the road of being here because we all go through changes, as we said, you know, and even if it's not a huge relocation, it's a change. Thank you so much for all of your helpful information. And of course, if anybody also wants to check out um, Anna's coaching sessions, you can also go to globalmobilitytrainer.com and I will link everything you need down in the comment section below. Um, otherwise, that's it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Have a great start in Germany. <laughs> if you have any more questions, feel free to ask them in the comment section below. Anna and myself will be going through and making sure that we can answer as many of those questions as possible. Otherwise, wie immer, vielen, vielen lieben Dank und... Bis später.